coach is kind of like a family counselor meeting a athletic coach. How many of you are involved in sports? Okay, if you're in a sport and you're doing it wrong, your coach is going to tell you, try doing it this way. And that's what I do as a family coach. I used to be a high school teacher and coach, and so I learned some things from that. I also have a master's degree in educational psychology, so I put the two together. For the last 11 years, I've been doing family coaching. And my main goal is to help parents be successful at raising teenagers. So I work with a lot of parents. I work with a lot of teenagers. I have an office two blocks away, right across the four seasons. also have an office right here, Oaks Campus. It's over at the Middle School Pod. And so if you're interested in coming to talk to me, you can just get a release from Karen Coyle's office. Come across the bridge. Come see me. First couple sessions are free. And we can talk about life and stress and stuff like that. And health and things that you're in this classroom. But today we're going to talk about, you know, what is a healthy family? What does a healthy teenager look like? There was a father who came to my office a couple of years ago. His kid went to Oaks Christian. And this is what he said. He was very troubled. He says, I just found out some information. I'm very upset. My son was a great athlete and student when he was here at Oaks Christian. We pushed him to succeed at Oaks. He is at a top college now on an athletic scholarship. But we don't trust him now. He's sneaky, doesn't go to class, he parties. In fact, he just had a whole weekend of binge drinking, and his grades have dropped. It's partially my fault. When he said that, you could tell that he was fighting back the tears. And I was kind of shocked, because this guy's got it all together. His family's a big Oaks family, successful in his work. And he was pushing his kid to be successful in school and in sports, right? Sound familiar? But for him to stop and go, now that he's got into this top tier school, he's going, it's partially my fault. Wow. And this is what he said. When he was at Oaks, all I did was stress achievement with grades and sports. I didn't work on character, balance, or health. So put yourself in my shoes. How am I going to help this student? How am I going to help this dad? What do you think was going on with a student who's now a college student, former Lion, former Oaks kid? What do you think was going on with him? He had freedom. He had freedom, yeah, definitely. I think because there wasn't his dad controlling him, telling him that he needed to uh, work hard for grades or football, that uh, he that he just didn't want to have to obey his dad anymore, didn't want to, so because he was just so stressed, there was no balance. Right. Yeah, he had a lot of pressure when he was here to get the grades and the sport. And then when he got to college, he decided to kind of relax. What else? What was going on with this kid in college? He probably felt like there was like a lot of pressure from everything. He just wanted to just the same thing, just relax and yeah. just forget about everything. Sure. Exactly. And part of it too, he he felt like he had a he'd earned a break. He worked hard here. He worked hard in his sport. His sport went to CIF several times, and he did club sport, and he was doing really well. And I was like, I'm just tired. I just kind of want to coast. So when he got to college, he just kind of partied and coast. Um, but as I thought about that, I thought, how do we define success? You know, what does a successful family look like? Does a successful family mean the same thing as a healthy family? And a lot of times we say this is success if you win CIF or if you get, you know, 4.6 or if you get into this Ivy League school. What do you think this student needed? The student that's away at this top school, he's still doing sports. What do you think he needed now that he was in college? Care. He needed care or character? Character. Character, right. Definitely. He needed someone to guide him. He needed a guide, yeah. What else? Yeah. Uh, something to look for beyond himself. Yeah. Like a purpose or something that he could live for other than just. CIF or the grade or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Kind of meaning, maybe some meaning or what comes next. 
So, as you think about that, the dad was asking me, we did something wrong. We kind of thought that if we put him into Oaks Christian and had him in this environment and pushed him in the high pressure, then it would produce. So it's this idea of kind of like this factory mentality. Do you ever feel like you're in this factory? <laughs> produce grades, produce good sports, produce the perfect kid. Hey, we've invested all this money in you. Produce it. Achieve. And he goes, so achievement and production obviously didn't work. He goes, so what does a healthy family look like? That's what his dad asked me. And if you look at this dad, you look at him, but this guy's highly successful, makes tons of money, good looking kids, nice house, but he's going, I don't, I gotta rethink success. So my job has been studying success, studying healthiness, and helping families learn how to relate to each other. And I've written books on this, and I've created websites, and I like to talk to teenagers. In fact, I, half of my clients are teenagers, and the other half probably are mostly their parents. So I like to work with the whole family. Because if you just work with the parents, send them home, and the kids aren't on the same page, or vice versa, it helps to work the whole thing we call family system. So, here are some things that will be helpful to you. These are the five essentials of a healthy family. And where we came up with this is from Search Institute. It's a national organization that's researched 1,500 families. And they looked at these 1,500 families, and they actually came up with 21 different qualities of a healthy family. But I don't want to overwhelm you and add stress to your life, because finals are coming up, right? I don't want you to try to remember 21. I want you to remember these five. In a previous class, what was the acrostic that they came up with? It's pretty funny. I can't remember what Never. it was. Never Cook, eat. Rotten. Never. Eggs. Wait. Rotten. Never cook rotten. I can't remember. Never eat rotten chicken eggs. Ever. Never cook rotten chicken ever. Yeah. Never cook rotten never chicken cook ever. Never cook rotten chicken ever. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the students, she came up with that, and I go, that's a good acrostic or acronym, whatever it is. And that helps you study. That uh, helped me study. Um, it helps me remember stuff. But I actually give parents this list of the 21 assets that these 1,500 families took this survey. And do you want to guess what kind of grade these 1,500 families got? Uh, there's 1,500 families in America. They just randomly picked them. And what kind of grade would you give these 1,500 families? If you're just looking at families all across America, not just uh, folks, Christian parents, based on these five things. How many, how many of you give families in America an A? How about a B? Okay. A C. D. F. What C? C would be like 70%. Uh, well, the reality is, out of these 1,500 families, if you look at the 21 different assets that they needed, most families scored at 47%. Which is what? Yes. So if you're like, hey, good, I'm not alone. So if you're kind of like feeling like all these other families have it together, most families in America have less than half of these assets if they have kids ages 10 to 15. So the way I look at that is there's a great job opportunity for me, which means that 53% you know, of America's families need me in what I do. <laughs> they need the content on what does it mean to be a healthy family. So let's break it down. The first one is nurture. When you have a nurturing home environment, <clears throat> you're going to feel loved, you're going to feel supported, you're going to have this connection with communication, you're going to have affection, and you're going to have support. Have you ever heard these two words? High expectation. Where did that come from? Mama. Mama. <laughs> what was she saying when she said high expectation? Yeah, usually grades, right? We're sending you to Oaks. It costs a lot of money. It's a great school. It's college prep. Hi, Mrs. H. And we have high expectations. What kind of feeling do you get when you hear from your parent or your coach? High expectations. What does that do to you? It puts a lot of pressure on you. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. it? puts pressure on us. What else does it do? It makes you want to work harder. Yeah, sometimes it does. Here's my theory. It's okay to have high expectation, 
But to really have a student that does well and is healthy, there needs to be high support. If you have high expectation, we believe in you. You can do this. And we're going to support you. You need a tutor, we'll get it. You need to not do soccer or club ball this semester, fine. We'll support you with that. Whatever it is. If you have high expectation, high support, then what that tends to look like is nurture. <clears throat> and if you don't have that, um, then you're going to feel disconnected. So watch this video. Let's see if I can cue it up here. I don't really know what I'm doing. That's nurture. How do you feel nurtured by someone listening to you? You feel like you, feel like you matter. You feel like you matter, yeah. Yeah, how you're feeling matters. And how you feel matters, exactly. What else? You feel like they care about you. Yeah. Like, like they want to know you. Mm -hmm. Listening actually helps your self esteem. You, know, you matter. You listen to me helps your self-worth. When people don't listen to you or they talk over you or you don't feel connected to them or they're always concerned about something else, they're always nagging you about your homework, you don't feel listened to or valued or heard, that actually can impact your performance when you think about it. If you don't feel heard or valued or capable, when it comes time to do the game or study, you're going to be, eh, not into it. I don't think I can. I have game today. I don't think I have the confidence to do it. Can you think of a time when somebody really showed value to you by listening to you? Not correcting you? 
not giving you advice you didn't want. How did that help you? If you have that at home, then you're going to feel really nurtured. So, one of the qualities of a nurturing relationship is positive communication, affection, openness, and support. So what I like to do is I like to give parents this list of the 21 different things, and I'll say, this is your parents' report card. Here's the research done by Search Institute. These are the 21 things that will actually make for a healthy family. If you have these aspects or these attributes in your family, guess what? Your kids, whether they're 10, pretty much up to 15 or 16, they're more likely to do really well in school and life. So how are you doing, mom or dad, with these 21 different qualities? And it's kind of fun, because sometimes I'll do this off a teenager and a parent in my office, and I'll give the uh, parent report card to the parent, and you can just see the parent getting really uncomfortable. And the kid going, yes! Because <laughs> they get to see our report cards, right? Your report cards. So this is like a little role reversal. So if you want, you can take these, don't do the 21 because it's too much, but you can take these five and go, hey, I wonder how we would rate ourselves and how nurturing we are. Or do we have the kind of routines, we call this establishing routines, that are predictable. If you don't have a certain amount of routines in your home, it's going to be chaotic. So why would that be unhealthy? How would a lack of routines be unhealthy for you? I'm sorry, like what kind of routines? Yeah, how would how do routines help you have a healthier family? And why would a lack of routines be disruptive to your health and your family health? Like the routine like if you say like every night like we have dinner together. Yeah. And that helps you like connect with each other like after the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't, it's every man for himself, like, like All right. exactly. And we need routines for sleep, right? Some of you guys are lacking in sleep, especially going into finals and stuff like that, right? So just having routines, you're going to be healthier if you can get your, your sleep. The average teenager needs nine and a quarter hours of sleep. So nine hours and 15 minutes, which is why you sleep for like 12 or 13 hours on the weekend. Because you know, you're like banking it when you're sleep deprived the rest of the week. So having a certain amount of routines it'd be really helpful. So, under routines, I have a tip in here I want to share. And if you take this one tip and you take this one idea, it's going to help you do better in school. It's going to help you do better on the athletic field. It's going to help you do better in your uh, athletic, in your arts. It'll help you do better socially. It'll help you do better um, just basically in life, all the way around, the choices you make. So in all four areas, so this one Habit. It's really a habit that I'll share with you. How much would you pay me to share this habit with you? It's going to help you get better at your sport, better GPA, better relationships at home, and better relationships with your friends. How much would you pay for that? Cash money. Oh, $5. Starting, at, starting at one. Starting one. Starting at least $5. I've got to have lunch out of this. $5. Okay, $5. $5. You guys aren't impressed, huh? Can you have an auction style? That's what I was going to do. <laughs> is this like the only way we can become better at our sport? Is if we buy this from you? Yeah. Then How much would you give for this? You're going to be better at your sport. You're going to get a better GPA. How much? Your parents are going to get along better with you, and your friends are going to love you more. Well, How much would you ask us? How much do you want? Okay. Every class I set an auction. 71. The highest bid has been 1000 bucks. <laughs> so I... I have, a, I have a credit card reader for my iPhone, you know, those $1,100. Things. And so a kid came and says, I'll give you a thousand bucks. And I go, okay, you have a thousand. He goes, no, I only have three hundred. Kid here. So he pulls out three hundred dollars. And I go, where's the seven hundred? He goes, here. He gives the credit card. It's really my dad's, but I have it. I go, okay. So I was pretending I was going to run it on my credit card. And he was going to pay me a thousand bucks. Right here. That was crazy. I was going to take it, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you free. Okay? Because you pay enough in tuition, right? Here's what it is. This is what they found out. The one thing that if you can do, it's a regular routine, if you can do this routine in your family, you will do better at your sport. 
you will do better at your school and in life. National Honor Society discovered this 15, 20 years ago now. <clears throat> I keep forgetting what year it is. 20 years ago. Every two years they test to see if it's still true. It turns out to be true. Here's what they found out. Remember from math, the common denominator? Okay. So they're looking for what is the common denominator between all these people that take AP and get into these top tier schools. And so the hypothesis was, by people like me, I'm an educational psychologist, it must be that they have really smart parents and the gene pool is just deep, right? Or it must be that they come from Los Angeles or New York or San Francisco or just vibrant cities where there's a lot of resources and these people, or they're just wealthy kids that have tutors left and right. Or it's a certain ethnic or race or nationality that just, you know, likes to study because that's the only life they have, you know. So that's the demographic that some people select. None of those were true. Didn't matter your ethnicity, didn't matter where you live, rural, urban, suburban. Didn't even matter if your parents were together or divorced. Didn't matter if you were biracial, didn't matter what. None of that counted. You know what counted? If you and your family had a family meal three to five times a week. Had a meal with your family three to five times a week. The meal lasted 20 minutes or longer, and you didn't have the TV on and you weren't texting at the table. <laughs> now, why would that work? Why would a family meal three to five times a week, even if you're from a divorced family and you have weekends with your dad and you have part of the week with your mom, so you have maybe a meal with your dad and two meals with your mom, why would that be effective in helping you get good grades and be better at your sport? What do you think? So you have the support, and you have the ideas and suggestions. One of the things they found out too is it's not a time to nag you about your schoolwork or your bad choice of friends or how come your room is so messy. Isn't that good? So it's more positive. But here's what they found out too. That if you have a little bit of debate, you have a little bit of debate going on where the parent takes this opinion and you have this opinion, that's even good. Let's say you're for all Obama, and you're going, I'm so glad Obama got elected, and your dad's a Tea Party Republican, and he's like choking on his spaghetti, and you're like, yeah. That's even good, because you're allowed to have your own opinion. A certain amount of debate or dissent, because here's what happens. Or let's put it in the field, field of sports. Okay. Who's, who's got a sports team here that you're really excited about? The Bobcats. The Leaders. Bobcats? Nah, that's not coming. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was thinking like the Bobcats. <laughs> Who are the Bobcats? Yeah. <laughs> Who are the Bobcats? They're basketball. They're basketball. They're really basketball. Oh, Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. Terrible. How about Lakers? Can we pick the Lakers? Yeah. I think we know that. We either love the Lakers or you hate the Lakers. Is that okay? Yeah. The Bobcats. I had to think who they were for a second. Sorry. Dude. Game. So, how many of you are Laker fans? Yeah. yeah. I am, but they're kind of like not doing too well. So let's say we have half of us that are like Ford Lakers and half of us kind of like think the Lakers are sucking this year, right? So now we have this debate, we're getting into it, we're at this table together. It really doesn't matter what our opinions on the Lakers are, but we're having this debate. If you have your passion side of your head going, which is your right brain, and you have your analytical side of your brain going, which is your left brain, and you're saying, well, the scores, you know, Kobe's kind of in the slump, that's your right brain. But I'm really passionate about the Lakers, that's a right brain. And you're trying to convince the people at your table, hopefully your family, that we need to stick with the Lakers or we need to abandon the Lakers or the Clippers, whatever. Then, you know what? Both sides of your brain are firing. And someone is taking your opinion seriously. You're feeling included. That's why family dinner works. So, what you can do is suggest that you have a family meal. It doesn't have to be family dinner. It could be breakfast. It could be lunch. Try to do it for 20 minutes. Try to have an interesting conversation. And if your parents think it's you know, a lame idea, they don't want to do it, say, I'll be in charge. I'll set it up, I'll cook, I'll pick the discussion point, and I'll set the timer for 20 minutes. University of Michigan came along, go Wolverines, 
And they have a very big university of uh, education there. They're, they're known, their school of education is world renowned. And so they said, yeah, yeah, National Honor Society, we took a look at your research, and it's not really that academic, though it was. And so they did their own study. Guess what they found out? The exact same thing. But one caveat. The caveat was the quality of the food does not matter. <laughs> so you can have a great GPA. It could be McDonald's. So it wasn't, a lot of us are thinking it's got to be super healthy. Well, Mrs. H would say it really should be healthy because this is health class. But the quality of food doesn't necessarily, isn't a, a causal factor in the production of a higher GPA or better at your sports. Now, why would you do better at sports if you have a supportive family at home and time to connect at your dinner table? you want to be. Exactly. Or let's say you're sitting on the bench, and it's basketball season, you've worked hard and you're not playing. If you at least, if you've got your uh, team, your family supporting you, you're not going to feel so alone. See how it works. So, any questions on that? Family meals? Okay. So that gives you nurture and routine. That's why that one's important. Okay, let's go to the next one. Maintaining expectations. These are the families that can talk about tough topics. They have fair rules, boundaries. They're clear about their expectations. And these, this part, um, you also are making a contribution to your family. If <clears throat> Here's what I would suggest. If your parents ever say to you, your job is to be a, what do they say? Doctor. No, right now. Why do you go to have school? Student. Student. Okay. Challenge them on <clears throat> i tell you why that's dangerous. If your job is to be a student, and right now you suck at your job, what does that mean about you? You got a, you're jobless. <laughs> yeah. Then who are you? You're like, uh, I don't know who I am. I'm not good at what I'm supposed to do. I was fired. So kind of challenge that a little bit. You're in school. Your job is to be a growing citizen or a human being or whatever you want to call it. One of those parts of your job is to be a, a student but you aren't totally defined by your school, or your academics, okay? So, oh, so where I was going with that, contributions, expectations. I think each of you guys should have something to do around your house that you contribute to the family. Like pick up poop. Yeah, pick up your dog poop. I hope that's the poop you're talking about. Okay, yeah. that's good. <laughs> so each, everybody should have a job around the family other than just homework. Because if you can be a contributing member of the team family, your role will be different. Do any of you have a brother or sister that's really good at sports or really good at school? Yeah. And sometimes we can live up to that. Sometimes that might be you and your brother or sister is trying to live up to being you. But if you have a team family, let's go back to basketball. There's different roles on the basketball team. Right. Not everybody can be point. Not everybody can be three. You have different roles that you play. Each family has a role. Each family member has a role that they can play. So if you can contribute, then you don't have to be just like your brother that got into you know some top tier school or your sister. And if you can make a contribution and have that contribution be individual, then that means there's a space for you. So, one of the qualities is having nurture, having routines, having expectations. The other one is being able to handle challenges. In the last three years, a lot of parents have lost their jobs. There's been a lot of underemployment or unemployment. There's been a lot of financial challenges. And so how a healthy family responds to this is saying, hey, what can we do together as a team to adapt to challenges? So, you can see why that would be helpful. And then the last one is feeling connected to community. Oops. I don't know how to get rid of that. Ow. Let's leave it alone. I forget that that board is so active, you know. It's lean up against it, it like reacts. So this idea is let's this actually happened. 
What would you do if a friend came to you, a sophomore friend, and say, and she says to you, I've been cutting? Where would you go with it? She's been cutting herself. Oh. What would you do with that? She's your friend. She's come to you. She says, can't handle the stress. Either from home or from school. So I've been cutting. She pulls up her sleeve and she shows it. Or maybe it's on her leg. She shows it. What would you do with that? Ask her why. You ask her why? Ask, yeah, why. Yeah. Talk to her about it. Talk to her about it. And then, where would you get help? After you've talked to her about it and tried to be empathetic, where would you go? Where would you get help? Uh, maybe your parents. I'd probably talk to her parents. Talk to your parents? Her parents? No, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Why not? Why wouldn't you do it? I think, I, I think that would might, like, make the situation worse, in a way. I think they'd notice. Like, what would make it better? Not to you. Uh, just talking to her, like, friend to friend. Talk to a friend, friend, and you say you maybe it is your parents that are making her stress and her making manage. her kind of tough. <laughs> it's kind of hard to know what to do. How many of you are 15? Ow. How many of you are 16? Okay. This is one of these issues that's difficult. You're trying to like, uh, I really don't know why you're doing this. Uh, and I'm going to be sensitive. There might even be people in the room that do this. And so, man, you got a lot of pain in your life. And, I'm 15, I don't know how to deal with it. So if you come from the kind of family that has these kind of characteristics, it's great if you have uh, knowing who to connect in the community for resources beyond you. Just like if a 16 or 15 year old friend came to you and said, last night or this weekend I went to this party and did a bunch of drinking and I have like six shots of Jack Daniels and I'm totally back smashed. Would you go, hey, that's cool, dude? Or would you say, uh, that's a bit much? <laughs> that's been crazy. Drinking. Where would you go with that information? I talk to him. Talk to him, yeah. What would you say? Why would you do that? That's a good question, actually. <laughs> Isn't one enough? Gee, yeah. really. Why five? What else would you do? Where would you go? You got an idea? I, I, I take them to like a class kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, not, not like a 12-step class or? Uh, no, like a, not a 21. <sighs> Where would you find one? Uh, Internet? Yeah. Isn't that great now? We can like Google it and look for one. So you do something like that. Say, I got to find you a class for teenagers that binge drink. Yeah, and then you go with them. Yeah. Make sure you actually. That's good. It's a good approach. I don't expect us to have all the answers now, but this is the kind of thing that you, if you have a healthy family and a healthy community, when something comes up that's a challenge like that, guess what? You can go somewhere. Uh, one of the resources that you have right here on campus is actually me right now. I have an office at the middle school, Todd, over there. And if you want to come see me, it's all confidential. I don't tell your parents. I don't tell your coach. I don't tell anybody. That's why we have it at the middle school. So you just get a pass from Karen Coyle come across the bridge and see me for 20 or 30 minutes, it's free. Cool. And then if you decided to like it, then we get you to take home a parent permission slip. And then uh, then I charge your parents. So, but the first couple of sessions is free. And the whole idea of it, just giving someone a safe place to talk for your teachers or coaches or parents don't even know. Uh, so we have that going on right now. So if you're interested in that or if you have a friend like that, chances are in the next three weeks, you will have a friend that will need something like that. And you need to know what is the community resource that I can send them to that doesn't cost money. Um, and How then, much? So, well, the first two sessions are free, and oh, after that, serious. it's eighty bucks. Well, is like per session, like? Yeah. Yeah, it gets expensive, but you know, with teenagers, you guys typically only need like three sessions, yeah. and you start feeling better at least most of the time. So this is my uh, email. This is my uh, cell phone. You can text that or call that if you have a friend that needs that. So that's what you want to do. So. <laughs> I was doing it on the email, so keep all in mind. And parents have seen the Okay, I don't know how to get this. Uh, Can't let parents come to the
six nine six nine six nine six nine six nine six nine still aren't talking? Okay, that's even more reason why we can't talk about this right now, okay? I mean, you know what? We can talk about rainbows and unicorns and puppy dogs. We can even talk about a puppy on the back of a unicorn sliding down a rainbow, but we can't talk about the sex. Dad, I'm being serious. And I'm being serious when I ask you, why are you being so serious when you're so young? I'm 17. Here's the deal. We can talk about this like when you're 30. Five and a half. When you're 35 and a half, we'll talk about this there. Tad, come on. Okay. Oh, what, what, what's brought all this on? Is it about that boy that you've been seeing? What's his name? Jimmy, Andy? David. David. Tell me about Andy David Go. David. David. He's, he's, he's really great. And you know why he's really great? Because he cares about me? No, because he wants something from me. Okay? All right? I know these things. I was a boy once and they're all scum. He's different. No, he's not different. They're all the same. Here's the M.O. First he's going to ask you on a date, then he's going to kiss you, and then he's going to want the sex. Then stop. No, we will stop. I think that's a great idea, because I don't even know how we got in this conversation. Let's just stop. That's a great idea. For once, I need you to listen to me. I do listen to you. I pay attention to you. I provide for you. I'm there for you all the time. You're so not involved in anything I do. Well, you're spraying stuff on me all the time. I mean, it's always like this. You're supposed to want to listen to me. You're my dad. And I will listen to you when your mother gets home. Dad, I'm pregnant. 